Hello guys, welcome back. Now in this session, we are going to perform learning assignment 6 where we will implement the user interface in SPFX client side web part application. So before starting the user interface implementation, we have to perform the basic task which we have seen in our earlier sessions. So what are those? Let's look into that. So guys, if you remember that these are the steps we have followed to generate our boilerplate code. So we are going to perform the same steps. Once we generate the boilerplate code, then we will write the code to generate the user interface. So let's do it. So our first task is to create a folder. So let's create a folder over here and we will give it a name called lab04 and this is our event registration. Now we will go inside that and paste our docker container template. So for that I need to grab the this one if you remember that what actually it is. So guys this folder holds the configuration for SPFX docker container. So let's copy this one and go back and over here we will paste it inside this folder. So now I have copied the dev container and we have completed our task 2. But over here I found that we did a spelling mistake. So let me correct that. So I will come over here. Now let's proceed further and we will go inside and we will open the Visual Studio code. And over here I will select open with code. Then it has opened the Visual Studio code and over here we need to select reopen in container. So it is starting the dev container. So now it has started the SPFX dev container. Don't bother about this error. Enter and now go to the terminals and over here click on new terminal. Now we are going to perform the third step. Now we will generate the boilerplate code. We need to write yo at the rate Microsoft slash SharePoint. So this will give us the boilerplate code. We need to specify some of the configuration. For this I am going to tell yes. And for this I am going to tell that same name we are going to keep. And here we want to create web part. And the web part name is event registration web part. Into, and we are going to choose no framework over here. Now it is started creating the boilerplate code. This we have already seen in our previous sessions. Pause over here. Once it gets generated, I will come back. So now the boilerplate code has been generated. Now let's proceed further and start creating the user interface. So to create the user interface, we need to go inside the source folder. Within that, we need to go inside the web parts and then we need to go inside the event registration WP web parts .ts file. You should close this one and over here we need to come over here and then we need to clean up this code till from line 30 to line 53 over here we need to delete this one and make sure that this sign is there now we need to start writing our code so guys whatever you write inside this it is going to be the html code but when we write it over here like div the editor will treat it like a text. So what I will do to speed up the development process, I will create a file over here and we will give it a name called stage.html and over here we will write the code which we are going to insert there. And what is the benefit we are going to get it over here is it will help us to generate the code very fast. So first we will write it over here div. So once you will write the div and press enter then the code will generate. Next we need to specify another div over here. We will tell that div again and within that we are going to create a table. So I will tell that I need table tag and then I want the border. Border is going to be 4. Next we need to specify the table row and within that we need to specify the table column. So td and then over here we need to specify the message please into registered user id. Next we need to specify another column which will hold the input field. So for that we need to specify td again and over here we need to tell input field and this is of type text and then we need to specify id equal to text id so that so this particular input field need to get the information from the user to grab the details about the registered user. Now next we need to create the input button. So to do that we need to specify td and within that we need to specify input and this is going to be of type submit and we will specify id over here. We will tell that id equal to btn read and then we will specify value equal to read registered user info. Now next Let's proceed further. Now next we need to create another row 
which will holds the information about the user so we will tell it over here er for the table row and within that we need to specify td and in this we are going to tell that user name and then we need to specify another td for the input control we need to tell that input and over here we need to specify this is of type text and id equal to user name now next we need to specify the text field for email this is for username so let's specify that let's grab this code and paste it over here and this is going to be the email of the registered user who registered for the event and over here we need to specify text email and this is of type email now we will proceed further and we will create the input control for the batch field if you remember our event registration form then over here we are having a drop down drop down list which holds the batch information and we are also having another drop down which holds the level of knowledge information so let's create this one we have already created the username and the email now we will create the input control for the batch and level of knowledge so let's proceed further so guys to create the drop down list we need to write the following code we need to tell that tr and within that we will tell td and over here we need to specify select and then we need to specify the name for it we will tell that batch and id i am going to tell that drop down list ddl batch and then over here we need to specify the options so we will write option and over here we need to specify the value i will call it as batch1 and what should be the display name of it we need to write it over here we will tell that batch1 copy this one and paste it three times and over here we will tell that two batch 2 and over here we will tell that batch 3 so we are done with the drop down list creation copy paste the same code because we have level of knowledge which is of the same type so we will leverage the code we will paste it over here again and this time we will call it as level of knowledge and over here we will tell that level of knowledge this is ddl level of knowledge this is going to be our id and over here if you remember what is our value it should be beginner you can specify the display name for this it is going to be beginner then we have intermediate intermediate and over here we need to also provide the display value that is also intermediate the third option what we are having export and over here we need to specify export so now we have done with the field creation now next we have to create the command buttons so let's look into the design once so so far we have already created the username email batch level of knowledge now we have to create these buttons create read update delete so let's do it so to create the button we will come over here and we will write tr for the new row within that we will tell that td over here we need to specify that input into and this is going to be the submit button and the value i am going to specify value this is going to be our create button that will create a list item then we need to specify over here id and our id is going to be the btn create so now copy this one and paste it three times so now over here we need to specify the value and this is going to be our read button then we are having id and id is going to be the btn read then we are having update button we will call it as update and over here button it is btn update last one is the delete one we will call it as delete and over here we will call it as btn delete so guys now we have done with this form creation so now let's do one thing over here we will keep a div that will holds the status so i will call it as div id equal to div status the significance of this div you will come to know in the upcoming session for the time being you just keep this guys now we have drafted the entire user interface what we will do we will copy this code and we will go back again over here and this time we are going to paste the entire code over here if you are going to write these code inside this particular tilde sign then what will happen you will take more time compared to the time which we have spent while writing this code so now let's proceed further and save this one now next we will build this code and then we will run it so how we will do that first let's go to the terminal 
and over here we will tell that new terminal and then we need to specify over here gulp build into so guys now it has completed the gulp build operation next we need to run the application by using the command gulp serve minus minus no browser this is very important no browser so enter so guys now server is started let's go to the browser and over here we will open the workbench hosted workbench so my hosted workbench address is first we will open the spfx exercises over here and then make sure that after your site collection name you have to specify underscore layouts slash 15 slash workbench dot aspx this you already knows about it and now over here it is throwing that server is not running so as i already mentioned that what you have to do you need to press Control shift i and then go to the network tab and over here you can click on ok and refresh it again and over here you will find the manifest.js you need to double click on it and it will open this and over here you will find the advanced option and you need to click on continue to the local host so now you will go back close this one and refresh it again then you will find that your server is started working so now we need to select this one and over here we will get that event registration web part so guys this is how our form look like we did some mistake over here we need to specify the title so let's do it we should come back over here and we need to specify over here td and then we need to specify into batch copy the same thing and go back to the below one and over here we will specify into level of knowledge so now we have done with our first exercise so let's save it so guys we have completed our step one where we have implemented the user interface now in the next session we are going to implement the step two where we will implement the functionality to create the list item so on this note i am stopping over here see you in the next session till then bye bye take care